Okay, so continuing with the ET48 2.0 build. This is going to be bag in, which is the ESC and radio tray install. It's really going to install all the electronics into the car. And the first step here is putting in the servo. And I'm using an MKS HBL 575, which to be perfectly honest with you guys, really isn't as much torque as I would really like to have for a Truggy. Eventually I'm gonna replace this servo, but for now it's gonna have to do. Um, but yeah, I'd prefer something, you know, the manual says no more than 300, or no, no less than 300, which this servo will actually do that. But I like quite a bit more than that, especially with how big Truggy tires are. So, like I said, at some point, I am going to upgrade in the servo department. But for now, we're going to plug this thing in. Get these screws in here. All right, so I got these screws in. You know, the biggest thing you wanna make sure is this side has these little things that stick up and those actually go into the servo holes. Um, so just make sure you get that sorted. And then the other thing you wanna check is that the bottom of your servo doesn't go past these bosses and if it if it does then you need to like shim the servo up so it doesn't go past mine's just barely below it so no shims required and you know this goes in the car this way front pointing that way and um so this cable is going to have to wrap around for wire management. It's kind of unfortunate that this servo doesn't let you change the orientation. It also kind of squeezes the grommet there. It's a little narrow um, for that grommet, the servo grommet. You could, if you wanted to, is unscrew the bottom and take that out. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave this the way it is. Um, and you know, the other thing you want to do is eventually you're going to put this servo horn on and you need to make sure you center this servo before you put that on. So zero out your sub trim and your standard trim for channel one, and then put this horn on and get it as close to where it needs to be, um, before you start. Um, so I will do that. Once I get it on the car and I'm ready to put this horn on. So speaking of putting it on the car, let's bring this thing up here. And so this is going to go right in here like so. And these bigger actually it's going to be the shorter screws so these ones down here are gonna hold that in and you know you use thread lock because they go into metal for now though i'm just gonna put these in because i'm gonna probably want to take them off when we're doing um, the ESC install. So I'm just gonna put it like that. 
you know, there's more screws that hold this servo down. We'll get those in later. I just want to hold that in so I can see how the wire routing is going to look. So then we'll install, this is the receiver box and it goes right back here, just behind where the motor is. And let's see if we can, so these come in from the bottom. It's these longer screws that hold that in. So I'll not necessarily be able to see me do this. There we go. There's one. The other one is right here. Not sure if I got that hole or not. Ugh. It's really hard learning new techniques to do this. Went on camera, but this one's gonna have to happen on my lap so I can see things. Sorry, you guys are gonna somewhat miss this but it's better but i think i'm gonna put yeah there you go so it's pretty connectors right there it's pretty tight um so i'm gonna get my speed controller and motor out we'll cover putting this motor mount on the motor and I'm going to start planning what I'm going to do for wiring. Okay, so I got my motor here and I just have the motor mount just kind of finger tightened on here. I just wanted to look at where these um, soldering tabs were going to lie. And um, so for this motor, I'm running it's a Hobby Wing 2200 KV G2 um, censored 1/8 scale motor, um, and you know it alternates bigger screws and then the screws that this Techno Kit uses every other one. So you can either have it to where the tabs are angled out here or angled over here and I don't want to be near that drive shaft so we are going to do it angled like so and so now is what I need to do is take these back out and put thread lock on them I don't like to put too much on here since this is an electronics device. Just enough to hold it in place. Um, and what's what I'll tell you is there's actually two sets of holes here. There's this set here and then there's this other one down here and then this side slotted so you can use either hole and for the bigger motors which you're which i'm using for 4s the manual recommends using the top hole and i looked you can actually fit it in the bottom hole but from experience, I can tell you that if you put it down there, your motor is going to be hitting the chassis um, when the chassis flexes. And I want to let my chassis move around a little. 
motor may actually end up hitting it anyway, but I want to give it a little space. So we're going to go with what the manual recommends. So that's in there. I'm not going to put the pinion on yet or cinch this down. Um, just want this in here so I can start looking at the wiring. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do next is put the ESC in here, which by the way, the ESC I'm using is this one here. It's the Hobby Wing XR8 Plus. It's a brand new one that uses the G2S controller. Um, so I'm excited to see how this one works. Um, has some pretty a pretty cool fan as well. All right, so I got this thing in here, and really, the only option I guess you could go this way, maybe even this way. Not that way because those legs are in the way. You could potentially go this way, but I'll be honest with you, I don't like those wires jammed right up against the motor like that. So my plan is to go this way. And have the wires come straight up and leave a little bit of a drip loop to there. And I'll give it a little bit of space from the servo so the thing can breathe and move around. But like pretty much about like that is where I'm gonna go. And then I'll probably stick this switch. Right back in here. Yeah, I'll stick that switch like right in there probably. Puts this wire like so. so yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm gonna go off camera and tape this thing down and think about soldering some wires in there. All right, so we got all these wires on here. You can see right there. Solder joints look really good. I was really impressed with the way Hobby Wing laid all this wire out for you. Super handy, you made it really easy. And they give you tons of length, which the old one, it didn't give you enough length. Seems like Hobby Wing is listening to their customers. I also like that all the wire is black. It used to give all these multicolored wiring. Anyway, I'm going to double back tape this in the electronics tray and then we will continue on. All right, so here we are. We got the speed controller. I've mounted it in the car. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to hold this wire down, but got everything in the car here and put this uh, receiver in my servo wire like barely reaches. So I think the next thing I want to do, I'm going to secure this pinion gear and set the gear mesh here. And yeah, then, man, I wish this wire was literally like a quarter of an inch longer. I really wanted to turn it, the receiver the other way. It was going to, that wire would have been perfect, but then it was just a little bit too tall for this top to fit on. So well, let's put this pinion gear on 
Yeah, we'll go for sure this way. Definitely want to use thread lock for the pinion gear. And right now, you know, the manual says to use a use a um, 15 or 16 for large tracks with this motor. And this motor, I've already seen it, it's pretty fast. So I think I'm going to order up a 15. Unfortunately, only have a 16 right now. But yeah, I think I'm going to get a 15. All right, that spins freely. Get a 15 to try that out. Um, so this motor mesh now, and then I want to put, I want to test, put this side guard on to see what it'll, if it'll help me feel better about that wire. Um, you know, I'm going to put thread lock on these and I'm going to set the gear mesh first. So I'm going to put this screw in. That's... That was a pretty good guess. Um, yeah, for the gear mesh, you want a little bit of play. You know, these are mod one pinions and spur gears, and you want a little bit of play in there. Like when you spin it around, it should feel pretty free. And if it doesn't, you have it too tight. Um, some people use, you can put like two pieces of paper in between the gears and then push everything up tight and um, lock the motor down and then spin the pieces of paper out and that's pretty close to what you want so if you're not super familiar with how much play to give it then I would recommend starting there. Um, I've done so many of them now, now I just do it by feel. Um, if you guys are over at the track and you want to know if your gear mesh is good, just swing by and say hi, and I'd be happy to look at it. Um, and you, when you, the trick with gear mesh is you want to check it in kind of the four quadrants of the spur gear because these spur gears are not always round. So make sure you check it in several locations on the spur gear. And if any of them feel too loose, then you want to tighten it up because loose is how you strip spur gears. All right, so yeah, the side guards here. This one is right here. I just wanted to look to see how this is gonna hold. Really, really, really wanted this. I'm going to play around with this some more and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so after playing with this a bunch, um, I was trying to figure out how to get this top, it's my servo wire, to where it it came in towards the bottom of the case. And if I oriented my receiver, putting it against the sidewall with that connector down, then this lid wouldn't fit on. And so, you know, a little bit of out of box thinking. It's a little bit tight, but oh, I just pulled it off. 
It's a little bit tight in there, but I taped this thing. Oh yeah, I might have to retape it. That tape is not strong enough. But anyway, I'm gonna tape it to the top of the lid. And I think I'm just gonna pull this just a little bit tighter. But it it's a little tight fitting, but it fits in there. So I'm gonna tape it to the top of this lid. And it'll and the cool thing is is this will actually kind of close off most of the receiver hole as well. Um so I'm gonna put that in the lid and stuff all this wire and my transponder. You know, I know you can put the transponder on the top here, but I'm just gonna stick mine in the case. I don't see any need for it. I mean, like the cool thing on top, I guess, is you can read the numbers, but to be honest with you, I just stick mine, my numbers in my phone and read them off that way. So yeah, I'm gonna tape this thing back up and put the screws in the rest of the side guard and put the top on and then we'll we'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so we got that receiver mounted in the cap of the RX box and these wires all tucked away. And I even was able to get this power wire put into this one tong, which I like because it's going to help prevent this thing from potentially getting in the drive line. So now the next part here is putting in this battery strap that goes in on these little pieces here. And... Yeah, it looks like it goes. Okay, so looking at this thing a little more, you can see there's like this little tab and that actually keys into the slot on this chassis. And you'll see there's holes on this side, no holes on that side. So, you know, this has to go down. I, you know, those tabs, I think, just help to take some of the side loads that you're gonna see with that battery in there. And you know, before you feed this thing through, you're gonna wanna put this strap through just to make your life easier. And you want the teak or the techno to go down so when it just wraps back around, there you go. Um, and you can decide what direction you want if you want the strap up front or this. I think I'm going to do mine towards the back. I'll probably re regret that decision, but. Make sure you put it in the right side too. Of course, 50% chance and I got it wrong. Oh yeah. So yeah, we'll put it that way. And then we're just gonna bolt this thing down. And then we'll feed this other one the same way. So this one's gonna come up from the bottom and we'll bolt this one down as well so I'm gonna bolt that down and then I'll show you what it looks like all right so we got the battery in here and I was trying to figure out how I was gonna route my battery wire and maybe if I was gonna shorten it but for now I think I'm gonna try it kind of wrapped in here and I'll shorten these leads to plug in just like that. And we'll see how that works. Um, the other thing I will note, and 
Let's turn this around so you guys can see it from this view. There's that view. Just kind of wraps in like that. I don't know if it's going to actually stay there when I run it, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully with this connector like so, it'll stay there. Um, there's also these little side braces that are optional. They go down in here on each side. And um, the stock setup uses them. It says, you know, for a slippery track, you can remove these from mechanical grip. And most of the Pacific Northwest tracks are what I would call slippery. So we're gonna leave those out. Um, there's also an antenna that would go in here and it would use this little set screw and I'm not going to put that in because I don't use that. Um, and then there's three little screws which are f for the um, for the transponder mount here so I'm not going to use those. So I've got a couple extra screws. But I'm going to short, actually I'm going to decide if I'm going to shorten these up or maybe leave them a little bit long because I'm considering a different battery. Um, anyway, um, I, I do want to, once I get this connector on, I'll come back and show you guys power on and things of that nature. And we do have one bag left, Bago, so I'll complete Bago first and then we'll do power on. So hope you found this useful and um, if you did, like and subscribe.